Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about uh, glaucoma. Uh, I am Dr. Sayed Musa, I am an ophthalmologist. So coming to the topic, uh, it's basically a progressive optic neuropathy characterized by changes in the optic disc and visual field. And the most common risk factor is raised intraocular pressure. We usually tend to say glaucoma means raised intraocular pressure, but it's actually a modifiable risk factor. But the actual problem is with the optic disc and the visual field. Okay, so glaucoma is optic neuropathy is also called as cavernous optic atrophy. We'll talk about optic atrophies in detail later in your mirror of the coming to aqueous humor pathway. So what happens is usually the the aqueous is produced by the ciliary body. It goes from the posterior chamber in through the pupil into the anterior chamber from there into the trabecular meshwork, schlems canal and epistelial vein. This is a picture which depicts all these things. Next comes the um, uh, aqueous humor dynamics. It's basically aqueous humor is uh, an ultrafiltrate of the plasma. It's basically a filtered plasma. The site of production is uh, on the non-pigmented epithelium of the ciliary process of the plasma plicata of the ciliary body uh, of the uvea. So it's that way. So it's basically non-pigmented epithelium which they tend to ask and ciliary process of the plasma plicata. Pars plicata that is a part of uh, ciliary body. Ciliary body is divided into two parts, which is pars plana and pars plicata. This is pars plicata. So coming to the secretion, it is subjected to influence by the sympathetic nervous system with opposing actions mediated by beta 2 receptor and alpha 2 receptor. So beta 2 receptor increases the secretion, whereas alpha 2 decreases the secretion. That's why we give beta blockers in order to decrease the secretion. And uh, we give alpha agonist in order to decrease the secretion. So coming to the steps, uh, it's usually a plasma filtrate uh, from the capillary network uh, within the stroma by the process of ultra filtration and uh, tr uh, transfer of this plasma filtrate from the ciliary stroma into the aqueous compartment across the epithelium. It involves two processes, diffusion and active uh, secretion. The rate of production is 2 to 3 micron, micron liters uh, per uh, minute. The substances whose concentration in aqueous is less than that of plasma is protein, glucose and urea. It makes sense because uh, uh, protein, uh, it should be less in the uh, in the aqueous. If there is any breach, that's when the protein is seen as uh, aqueous flare. Uh, whereas uh, glucose and urea, all these things, it needs to be in the uh, blood aqueous barrier. And coming to the substances whose concentration in aqueous more than the plasma is ascorbic, ascorbic acid, lactate and pyruvate. It's all because of increased production of all these uh, substances because of anaerobic uh, anaerobic metabolism of the uh, lens. Coming to aqueous humor, it flows from the posterior chamber I showed you, from the posterior chamber to the anterior chamber through the pupil. Uh, from the anterior chamber, it uh, goes through two outflow pathways. One is a conventional or trabecular meshwork pathway that is 90%. Uh, that's uh, That accounts for 90%. Trabecular meshwork to stem canal to collector vessels to epistolar veins. Uh, and then uh, the site of maximum resistance in this pathway is the juxta canalicular part of the trabecular meshwork. So juxta canalicular part of the trabecular meshwork which is the problem here. And this is what is uh, trabecular meshwork, the picture you can see. And the second pathway is uncon unconventional or uveoscleral pathway. Uh, that is where uh, the 10% uh, remaining 10% happens. That is from the ciliary body uh, into the supracoroidal space into the uh, epistolar veins or into the vortex veins. And that is the A part, which is the trabecular meshwork part, that is the conventional one, 90%. The B part, which you can see here, that is 10%, which is the un unconventional uveous level pathway. And the last but not the least is the iris pathway. Very few things happens in iris pathway, which we don't uh, tend to think about it. So that is about aqueous humor pathway. We'll uh, go ahead with the other topics soon. So coming to our uh, glaucoma features, there are four things which you should remember. One is intraocular pressure, next is visual field defect, optic disc changes and then the angle of anterior chamber. So these are the four things which is uh, key for our glaucoma evaluation and glaucoma thinking. So the same thing, uh, evaluation of glaucoma. Uh, first is the intraocular pressure using tonometry and then angles of uh, angle of anterior chamber through gonioscopy and optic disc evaluation through 90D uh, lens with a slit lamp, uh, biomicroscopy or uh, with a uh, direct ophthalmoscope and then perimetry using a uh, visual field.
like Humphreys, Octopus, those things are there. So coming to our uh, tonometry, uh, the normal tonometry is basically to uh, check your pressure, intraocular pressure. Okay, the normal intraocular pressure is 11 to 21 millimeters of mercury. There might be diurnal variation that is in the morning it can be plus or minus uh, 5 millimeters of mercury. So the normal uh, intraocular pressure is uh, 11 to 21. Coming to uh, the types of tonometer, then uh, the first tonometer is inundation tonometer. It's basically a, a Schiotz tonometer which you would have seen in your uh, UG. Uh, it is widely used because it is portable and the technique is simple to learn. But the main disadvantage is that uh, it is uh, the reading is affected by scleral rigidity. Next uh, is our uh, applanation tonometer. It is based on Imbert Fick law. The law states that P is equal to F by A, where P is the pressure inside the sphere, F is the force, and the A is the area. In uh, most applanation uh, tonometers, the area A is fixed, which is 3.06 millimeters, and the force is variable. Types of applanation tonometer uh, includes uh, Goldman's applanation tonometer. It's a gold standard tonometer. Easy to remember. Goldsman, Goldman as gold standard. It gives accurate and reproducible readings. The main disadvantage is that the reading is dependent on corneal thickness. That is, the normal uh, corneal thickness is of 520 microns. Also, its accuracy decreases with uh, in irregular corneas. As you can see here, this is how it is measured, and you will see some Myers at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the image. You can see these myas. This should uh, intersect. The inner uh, circle should uh, coincide. That's when we get, get the correct reading. So coming to our next uh, thing, which is Perkins uh, handheld tonometer. It's portable. This is the Perkins one, and it is portable and uh, used mainly in children. The other things are tono pin. It's like a pin. You just uh, click on the eye. Uh, it's it's for irregular corneas. Uh, McKay Marg uh, tonometer. It's for again irregular corneas and uh, Maclakow uh, tonometer. It's the exact opposite of Goldman's applanation tonometer, where the variable applanation area and fixed force. There, the uh, area was fixed, which is 3.06 uh, millimeter. Here, it is different. Coming to the next topic, which is gonioscopy. Gonioscopy means visualizing the angles of the anterior chamber. The angle of the anterior chamber cannot be visualized directly through an intact cornea because of because the light from angle st angle structures undergoes total internal reflection. At the anterior surface of the precorneal uh, tear film, as you can see, the the rays come here and then uh, it gets deflected. So when the light travels from the medium of uh, higher to lower refractive index, it will be reflected at the interface between the two unless the angle of incidence is less than a certain critical angle. So the critical angle here is 46 degrees. This they can ask you in your entrance exam. And then uh, th there is a lens called a gonioscope, which is uh, used to overcome this total internal reflection, as you can see here in this picture. Since it was reflected in the previous picture, here it is, uh, it is not reflected, it goes directly into the mirror and you can visualize that. Now coming to uh, different types of gonioscopy, uh, there is a direct uh, gonioscopy called uh, Copies, Barkens, Thorpe and Swan Jacob. Whereas intact gonioscopy, which you, we usually use, it's Goldman's. As you can see in this picture, this is Goldman's three mirror and this is Goldman's single mirror. And then Z's and Posner, which has a handle here. And uh, there is uh, there are other methods of angle evaluation in uh, in uh, ophthalmology, which is basically using anterior segment OCT, optical coherence tomography, or ultrasound biomicroscopy, otherwise called as UBM. So structures visualized on gonioscopy is basically Schwab's line which is again can be asked as a question of uh, what is the anterior limit of Desmet's membrane which is Schwab's line and then trabeculo meshwork, scleral spur, uh, ciliary body and root of iris depending on the structures which are visible, visible we get, get the angle is open or closed. As you can see the white uh, mark in the image that is the Schwalbe's line whereas the black mark it is the ciliary body. So Schaffer's grading of angle width so grade 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. So 4 is like basically the angle is almost open. So uh, 2, 3 and 4 it is, uh, I mean two, uh, 3 and 4 it is open. So no issues with that. Whereas 2 it is little bit critical, could be uh, could be occluded and 1 and 0 it is highly chance of occlusion. So basically Schwalbe's line uh, is seen and uh, here Schwalbe's line to Schleel spur is seen. Here it is Schwalbe's line to Trapecular Meshwork is seen. Here uh, only uh, Schwalbe's line is seen. So basically uh, Schwalbe's line is seen in 1. Uh, Schwab's line, trabecular meshwork is seen in 2, Schwab's line, uh, trabecular meshwork and scleral spur is three, seen in 3. Uh, here all the 4 structures are seen in 4. Basically it depends on what structure you see. 0 to 4 it is graded and uh, 1 to 2 it is uh, 
highly occludable and 2 is also this possibility of occlusion whereas 3 and 4 there is no possibility of occlusion. The same grading it is uh, seen in this picture as you can see 4 all 4 structures are seen, 3 3 structures are seen, 2 2 structures are seen, 1 1 structure is seen and uh, the, the last one is 0 no structures are seen. Coming to optic disc evaluation uh, basically there are two methods by which uh, optic disc uh, gets damaged. Uh, one is mechanical effect of raised intraocular pressure and then and, and the second one is uh, compromised blood supply. As you can see in this picture depicted, uh, intraocular pressure causes uh, mechanical damage whereas optic nerve head perfusion decreases and because of which there will be axoplasmic flow uh, which is lost and uh, ganglion cell death and apoptosis. So which cells are de de dead in uh, glaucoma is a question that they can ask you which is ganglion cells. And the optic disc is evaluated uh, clinically using uh, direct ophthalmoscope, this is the direct ophthalmoscope or with a slit lamp biomicroscopy and a 90D lens. So the slit lamp which we use and uh, we use this 90D lens in order to visualize. So the other machines like uh, in the case of angles I said uh, uh, anti-segment OCT and UBM here it is OCT again this OCT is for uh, the nerve particularly and then confocal scanning laser polarimetry uh, we call it uh, CSLO. Then uh, comparing our normal and advanced glaucomatous changes. As you can see here, the disc is normal and there's small cup, which is uh, the, the white area is a cup and the dark, the light pink color uh, is the disc. As you can see here, this is advanced cupping where the cup is, it's almost 0.8 to 0.9. So this is how we can uh, differentiate between uh, normal and the glaucomatous uh, disc. There are a few other uh, key parameters which you should know in order to uh, tell whether the patient has glaucomatous uh, disc changes. So first is increase in cup, we call it cup disc ratio, is due to en enlargement of the optic cup. Asymmetry more than 0.2 in the cup disc ratio between two eyes, both eyes of the same patient. And there is something called isn't rule which is inferiorly it will be thick, uh, thick neuroretinal rim. We call the, the space between the cup and the disc is called neuroretinal rim and uh, that will be thick in the inferior quadrant, then in the superior quadrant, then the nasal quadrant and then the temporal quadrant. The inferior rim is broadest followed by superior nasal temporal. So it's called isn't rule. This rule is broken in the case of uh, glaucoma. There are other signs called uh, lamina dot sign. The pores of the lamina cribriosa becomes visible through uh, the optic cup and as the cup becomes deep. As you can see all these grayish dot 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 uh, in the first picture that is what is lamina dot sign. Then there is something called bayonetting sign as you can see in the second picture there is a shifting of the blood vessels uh, that is called bayonetting like how uh, in a pistol they, uh, there is a bayonet like that uh, you will have a bayonet in the uh, blood vessels. And then nasalization of uh, vessels which is called nasal, nasal shifting and then nerve fiber, uh, nerve fiber bundle defects these are seen in uh, 90D and uh, using a gray uh, a green filter, a green filter uh, the red free is made and because of which the nerve fiber bundle can be visualized. If there is any defect, wedge defect is seen that then you, will, you can predict the patient is having glaucomatous disc changes. So coming to perimetry or visual field evaluation, uh, we call us, uh, there are two types uh, Humphrey and Octopus which is not uh, much needed for your exams but uh, we need to know what are the problems that can happen in the case of glaucoma. So normal visual field is superiorly 50 degrees, nasally it's 60 degrees, uh, inferiorly 70 degrees and temporally 90 degrees because there is no bone here that's why you can see uh, 90 degrees whereas the inferior bone is little bit down and the frontal bone is little more that's why we can see only 50 degrees and the blind spot is between uh, 10 to 20 degrees as you can see in this image uh, this is the blind spot uh, the, the, red, the red thing is a blind spot and uh, this is the sensitivity as you can see in the macula the sensitivity is more Whereas in the other image, uh, you can see the amount of uh, visualization that you can see. This is called isoptar. Coming to visual field changes in glaucoma, uh, the first is a paracentral scotoma. A paracentral scotoma is an island of relative or absolute visual loss within 10, within 10 degrees of fixation. As you can see in this picture, this is the paracentral scotoma. Next is the nasal step of Roeni. The appearance of a horizontal shelf in the nasal visual field is ca caused by asymmetry in visual nerve fiber loss at the two poles. As you can see, this is the uh, nasal step. The gray area is the nasal step. The serial scotoma is one that appears to start at the poles of the blind spot and arches over the macular area without reaching the horizontal uh, meridian nasally. Uh, here you can see the serial scotoma in the orange color that is depicted there. Then going to the other changes. Uh, 
there is something called arcuate or germ scotoma which is like arc the entire arc uh, it forms a scotoma uh, the arc of germ scotoma also appears to start at the superior or inferior poles of the blind spot and arch over the macular area uh, widening as they curve down or up uh, to end as a horizontal line nasally which never crosses the horizontal divide of the visual field so here there is a dictum called uh, glaucoma never crosses i mean it doesn't cross the horizontal uh, field whereas the uh, neuroophthal in neuroophthal all uh, brain related issues it doesn't cross the vertical meridian so uh, g for h there is glaucoma it doesn't cross uh, horizontal meridian visual visual field changes in glaucoma so there is something called double arcuate or ring scotoma uh, in which advanced glaucomatous field defects so only central and uh, temporal islands of visual are left uh, when two arcuate scotomas uh, expand to involve the peripheral uh, visual field the end stage or near total is this tubular vision as you can see with only a residual uh, temporal island of vision occurs at the last stage so coming to classification and overuse of glaucoma there are two types of glaucoma first we have to check the intraocular pressure then the nerve head uh, deformity and then the angle uh, whether it's shallow or anterior chamber and then we, once we do all these tests then we will go for gonioscopy gonioscopy we diagnose it into two parts which is open angle or occludable or angle closure and then in the open angle it's again divided into primary and secondary secondary if there is a secondary causes primary if there is no secondary cause and then uh, angle closure again it's primary and secondary if there is any secondary causes so generally the treatment for uh, open angle is uh, medication first then laser trabeculoplasty and then trabeculectomy whereas in the case of occludable angle it's iridotomy medication and trabeculectomy if it doesn't work